Welcome back, welcome back. Today we are looking at my 2021 forecast. Now, I have said before that I do not use forecasts in order to do my monthly budget, and that is still 100% true. What I do with my forecast is I look at more long-term things and I use it to create my template. The template is what I have in my YNAB so that I can just click on an entire category group and auto budget it. Um, so I do suggest everyone have a template and this is what I use to create that template to see what generally on a month to month basis is going to work for my anticipated income. Now, if I don't end up bringing in that amount of income or things change, then obviously I will have to roll with the punches and make it work. I don't put the entire amount that I forecast in at the beginning of the month and just go from that. No, no, I budget the money as it comes in, but this does help me to figure out what my template should be, as well as to look at longer term goals. Longer term meaning more than one or two months. So for instance, my goal, my biggest goal for 2021 when it comes to finances is to pay off all of my credit cards. I want to be 100% credit card debt free by the end of the year. Now, Chase is still not showing as paid off on my 2020. 2020 budget and that's because I haven't made the payment but it's completely safe for already so as long as nothing changes I will have already paid that one off now at the end of December I will come in and update this based on how much I think that I I mean how much I actually still need to pay so what I have here is I have that I need basically $1,900 and I took the amount that I currently owe and how much I anticipate paying off to get this number because I wanted to do it a little bit early so that I could record and share with you guys. Um, but of course, this is just a forecast. So it's never going to be perfect. And that's one of the reasons we budget every single paycheck rather than once a year or et cetera. <laughs> but I do like these. So if everything goes according to plan, I should be credit card debt free in March, which is amazing. Now, these are both a goal met and an outlier month. And they are huge amounts of money. And the reason that is, is because I anticipate getting additional income that month that I normally would not. You can see here that I have my, what I anticipate my base income to be. And I did put um, an April 3% increase on there. Whether or not that goes through or not, I'm not sure. This is an forecast, right? It's projected. It may be there, it may not, we shall see. But I also have my second income. I have a $500 I anticipate to come in pretty much every month from various and sundry sources, from teaching online, from selling random things um, on Facebook Marketplace, whatever I need to do. I'm trying to get at least $500 every month. Um, and that's after I put money aside for taxes obviously, because this is my, I should probably, maybe not obviously, I should say that it's net because I don't have a section on here for taxes. But in the month of March, I anticipate getting um, my annual bonus and that would be a little bit additional. Now, whether or not it comes through or not, we shall see. I know that, and this is net, what I anticipate net. Um, we shall see if it actually comes through. We shall see a lot of things, but I'm really, really hoping so because having that huge change there means that I'll be able to pay off all of my credit cards with this little bit of extra money here, obviously, in the month of March. And I don't, I don't know if I can explain how that makes me feel. That is an additional push to keep going when it doesn't feel like I'm making a lot of progress. That is an additional, like, amount. Uh, it's just, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> I had really hoped that I could get them done earlier than that, but that is what it is. March was my drop dead date for Bank of America and Chase. I was going to have to do whatever I could to get them paid off by then because April is when my um, interest starts accruing again. And I do not want to pay interest on that money. That's the entire purpose of why I got both the Chase and the Bank of America, because I took the money from the, that was on my visa card and I divided it. Cause it's like over $12,000 into two that were 0% for 18 months. And one that was just continuing on as, as normal. 
And I've continued to pay interest on this one, and that sucks, but it's about 40 bucks versus like $100. So that's definitely some savings. So it helped me to pay it off faster in that way. And I wanted to make sure they were paid off in time, and they will be, as long as everything goes according to plan. Now, next up, I have my charity section, and I'm still not in person at a church because I... It's just, it's dangerous. And I don't know that it's something that I feel comfortable doing right now. So I have online church and everything, but there's not really a way to do contributions. So it's just kind of sitting at $100 waiting to see what happens. So hopefully once I get everything paid off in March, we'll be back in church fairly soon after that. And then I can make changes. But for now, that's where we're at. Next up is my monthlies. This is what I anticipate happening. Pretty much it's staying at the template. Um, until I get to the month of May. In the month of May, my natural gas and my electricity kind of switch places. So for the first part of the year, um, natural gas is higher than normal, and then it goes back down. And for the second part of the year, or at least good chunk of the year, from May until around October, I have a higher electricity bill. This is basically just because I'm either running the heat or I'm running the AC. Pretty simple, right? And I have two years of data at this point to look at. So I looked back at 2019 and 2018 and then what's been happening so far in 2020 because I bought my house in 2018. So it's been about two years now. So I have two years of data to look back on and say, hey, what is my average over the last two years in every month? And then also look a little bit deeper because it was going to tell me about like, uh, 60 bucks a month or something for the natural gas and like 90 or 100. But I have a couple months that are going to be higher and a couple months that are going to be lower. And especially on those higher ones, that can kind of throw me for a loop if I'm not anticipating it. So I have a, an update template section and an outlier month section or color code, I mean. So these two are update my templates. So I'm updating and then I'll update again in November for my electricity. Now, in the gym section, I have a red, and you'll be like, I haven't seen red yet. That's the outlier. Well, I guess you have seen red up here, but anyway, there's an outlier. That outlier is that I'm hoping to be able to go back to the gym in May. We shall see. Who knows? Um, but the month that I go back to the gym is the month that I will have to pay for two months of gym membership fees. So it is an outlier. And then the blue right after that says, hey, update the template from $0.00 to 2706. And so far, all we've been looking at is either by date or monthlies. So um, I didn't know what to call these. I put them as by date because I wanted them paid off by March, but they don't really fit into my actual by date goal frequency. They they kind of fit more into the evergreen. They're special. So I'm just, I put them as by date in case you're wondering. Um, why they were listed by date is because I planned on having them paid off by March when I started looking at everything and at, by the end of the year for sure. Um, next up, annual expenses. On annual expenses, all of this goldenrod kind of color is when that expense comes due. So you see I have a quarterly goal um, of $110 for my HOA, and it's due in March, June, September, and December. So it gets emptied out in those months. Now, my dues go from um, $1.11 right now to $0.83 cents after that for TSV, and that's because I didn't start saving right away in 2020. So once I move over to February and I've paid my dues, then basically it's going to be $10 divided by 12 rather than divided by like nine or something. I could figure it out, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. So then it'll go down. So I have to make sure to update the template. And this actually should be 11 because that's what it is right now. Now, Sirius Radio, I'll have an entire year paid for going forwards um, through May 2021 after May of 20, I mean, through May 2022, after May of 2021 gets here. I don't know if I'm going to pay for it, to be completely honest. Right now I'm saving for it, 
but I'm just not in the car enough. And most of the time when I'm in the car, I'm listening to either podcasts or um, financial updates or the news or just jamming out to songs that I already have on my um, phone. So it's like, do I really need serious radio? I don't. And it's $73 a year. And that's actually pretty good for what I hear most people get charged for. And I've been, I've been with them for a while and I call and get it lowered every year. But anyway, I'm saving for it. I don't know if I'll do it. If I decide to do it, then I will not, probably not go for 2022. So that's why I put it as a zero going forwards. And I might get to move this whole $72 into another category um, when May comes around if I decide, yeah, I'm just not going to do it. I've been holding off because I want to wait until I see what I'm doing when I'm regularly going to work every morning. Am I going to be wanting to listen to podcasts in the morning? Um, Because right now I'm going in later in the day because I'm only doing half days in the office and half days at home most of the time. So it's like in the mornings, am I going to be wanting to listen to that type of stuff or am I going to be willing to listen to music? And then once I decide, is it worth it enough to me to spend the $72 a year? I don't know. So I'm giving myself some time. I went ahead and budgeted for it the rest of until it's due. And then after that, I said, no. Um, Costume assessment. It's due every June. So there you go. Um, It went up actually here because I put some extra money into it ahead of time. And that's why it's only $3.85. But $50 divided by 12 is $4.17. So it'll go up a little bit next year. My Google Drive stays at $1.75 a month. It's due every June. Zombies Run is due in August, and it's $0.72. Cents. I do have um, a very inexpensive version. Um, it's $8.65. It's the Legacy. I don't have the special, very expensive <laughs> annual one that they're doing right now, which is like over $100 a year. It just does not fit in my budget right now. It just doesn't, unfortunately. Um, my Alarm. $5.25 for the um, fee, which actually, it's not uh, $63. It ended up being $53, which was kind of cool. So, I'll update that right now. $4.42. There we go. And I only know that it changed because... I just paid it (laughs) this November right now. Um, So that's kind of cool. I think I paid more last last year because the bill came in the mail late and then I didn't open my mail right away. So I ended up getting like a late fee added to it potentially, or maybe it didn't come out of my check out of my checking account when I told it. I remember there being something weird and funky about it. Oh, that's a Roxy, by the way. Roxy, say hi to the camera. Say hi. That's Rossi. She's not usually in here. Um, She usually hangs out elsewhere, but I have her blocked off from her favorite places right now. So she's hanging with me. Second best. I've got some cleaning solution down to get into the grout. So that's where her kennel is in that room. So she's blocked out of it. Um, Amazon Prime due in December. Nice like 10 bucks a month. Not too bad. Not for everything that I order through there, at least. Um, Then I have my everyday expenses. I pretty much just stuck to my template for that. And my template from last last year to this year hasn't really changed a whole lot. Um, Now, there are some big life event, big life event potential things coming. And if they do, that will change my entire forecast. And if that happens, I will let you know and I will reforecast because if anything crazy happens in your life and there are big changes and you should really look at what your template is. And this is how I usually look at my template. Um, sinking funds. Now I have things that are not monthly and not annually or not. Yeah, not annually, not monthly, not by date and not uh, quarterly either. <laughs> They are now evergreens. This is how much I want to keep in there just on an ongoing basis. So I would like to have $500 in here. If you look, I will not have reached $500 anywhere this year. I will still keep going. But at the same time, this is a brand new car. So hopefully I won't need it. 
Um, I will actually have hit $500 through uh, at some point during the year. I think it's like in the summer, but that doesn't take into account the fact that I'm going to have to get like an oil change or two in there. So I figured in actuality, I won't have hit $500. So I'm just going to keep on putting $40 in there <laughs> forever. Um, then I have my home, which the 1% is 1710 and the deductible is 1650 so I decided to go with the 1%. And I'm not going to hit it this year either. Honestly, I keep spending it. The month of November, I spent way more than $25. So much more. Ugh. So I've completely cleared this one out. I'm starting all the way over um, in December. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to bump it up to $100 starting in April. Once I was able to do so because I'll have less debt, I said, hey, I really need to be putting more than $25 a month into here. So as soon as I could make it happen and the budget was in April. So now in April starting, it will be $100 a month after that. In visits, obviously, they are very important to me. Um, I usually spend about $300 on a flight when I do that, um, but we haven't been able to fly, so that's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put $100 a month into it, and then in March, when I get my bonus, I'm going to go ahead and like just throw some cash in there so that I'll have money, and then I'll be able to just take money out of it so I can just put $200 a month going forwards after that. And that might need to change, depending on life stuff who knows right but right now that is the plan personal care ten dollars a month um i did decide that a couple of these were going to be staying as a sinking fund rather than as a just per spending but we'll get into that when i when i do the uh next budget with me on that um, I don't actually need any money in costume and show items because I wanted a $40 gold fund that's evergreen and I've, I'll hit it in December. So actually that should be green already because it's already been funded fully <sighs> or it will be in December. Travel, I'm not going to hit $1,000, but I want, I'm going to put $300 in there. And honestly, that $300 can get moved to any of my events if they end up happening. Whether they do or not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping to know um, in the next month about one of the events, but the other one I'm probably not going to know until next year sometime. And the, the other thing else has already been canceled, but those ones, those ones are the expensive ones, and that's why they're being held off on being canceled or rescheduled or etc. until closer to the date, which is great. But it's also kind of sucky for me figuring out my goals, thoughts. But anyway, talked. Um, I'm putting $500, and I'll hit that in April. Um, October is when, or September actually, is when we would need to have it. So four months before that in April, I anticipate probably spending all 500 of that. Oof, which means in 2021, 2022, I'm also going to be needing to save that money, money back. Or if I can find another way to fund it later in the year, do so. Work expenses, I already have 100 bucks in there. It just kind of stays. And then we move down to gifts. I mentioned that I was going to be adjusting that. I decided to go with $20 a month rather than 30 because I'm putting everything else here. Everything else is annual. You can see when the events are visually because I'm a visual kind of girl as I've mentioned it is also over here um, you'll note that my sister's is green for her graduation that's because it is a one-time event and so 2022 it'll get taken off but that will give me a hundred dollars to spend on her gift um, which I don't know what it's going to be yet I talked to my parents and we were like well not sure what she's gonna want yet maybe she'll want a new computer and I can put a hundred dollars towards that um, and my parents will probably put some money towards it as well, or maybe she'll want something specific for her job. I think they, I think they bought her a stethoscope she wanted last time she graduated. She's a nurse, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what she's gonna want. We'll find out. Oh, my nose itches so bad. I'm so sorry. Ah, I've been trying not to itch for. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, next up, um, the rest of my annuals. You can see that. 
because of the way that it's structured, pretty much the month after it turns yellow, as in that is when the event is, it goes down after that. And that is purely because of how um, I ended up changing it mid-year. So because I changed it mid-year, I have to spend more money to put it to get to my goal um, before that day. But then after that, I'll have the number divided completely by 12. So 20 divided by 12, 100 divided by 12, 30 divided by 12, whatever it is, divided by 12 rather than divided by three or divided by four or six or whatever. So for most cases, it's going to go down. So that's a good thing. That means that I'll have more money to spend later in the year in that case as well. Next up. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, short term goals. These are my up to one years. These are staying the same because most of my ones that are one to five years are not going to actually pushed up until the to into the one year category until summer. So as some of these fall off, I may move a medium term goal up into short term goal come summer. But for now, when I'm doing the actual forecast, they are technically still a one to five year because they're in the 18 to 24 month range rather than the six to 12 month range. Okay, so my license is due for renewal in April. Um, after that, it is now an eight year. I forgot to add this one on there. So it's only been added, I think, in the month of October, if you have watched that year, that um, budget with me. But anyway, so it'll go down to 34 cents per month after that, which you might be like, why bother? And I did ask that as well. But I like just knowing that it's there. And 34 cents a month is negligible, right? And it's done. Car registration, $3.92 per month. Um, and that is actually a two-year registration because the car is brand new. So it will probably go up in um, 2022, um, starting in June, because it'll I think it'll go back down to a one year. But I don't know how much it's going to be until I pay it the first time. So I took the, the cap. Um, I ran the numbers online. I was like, what is the maximum I would have to pay? Da, 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 da. And I think the maximum is going to be 103. I'm not sure. Um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's less than that. But I went ahead and went with 103. And if I have extra, then well, that'll help me in 2022, right? In the June forwards. You get it. Um, appraisal, chest freezer, office decor, pillow safe, trash bins, all of that will be actually saved for before the end of the year, but I'll probably end up paying for the actual, are you spending the money that's in there in the first quarter of the year. I'm hoping to get the chest freezer in 2020, but we will see. I actually bought one uh, yesterday and I went to go pick it up and they said, oh, we're out. We refunded you. And I went, excuse me? Like I made arrangements to be here and I paid for it. Look, two hundred and fifty dollars, two fifty. That's what I paid. And they're like, "Oh well, we ran out." I was, like, ah. I, was I was not happy. <laughs> so I'm gonna be saving a little bit more, and we will see. I think that I'm probably gonna end up making it up to four hundred dollars, and just so I can try to get a freezer in general because it's so hard to get right now. We shall see. But I should hit the the goals in. Um, 2020. So that's why they're green in the goal rather than over here. And then I'm hitting the goal um, for grill and garage as well as pantry storage in the summertime because those are my summer projects. And pets goes on forever because they are my babies. And I have a three year plan for their, that particular um, goal. The thousand dollar goal here is the emergency fund part of this. It's not the entirety of it because obviously I'm putting $100 basically in every month. I will hit $1,000, but that's the emergency fund part of it. There is also the section of their annual medication or their annual vet appointments and their annual vaccinations and their monthly medications and all that jazz that are also factored in. Um, I believe I did a video on how I calculated this $95.27. If I didn't, or you want me to do it again, because you can't find it either, because I can't remember what I called it, um, let me know. I'll redo it. No problems. Um, I think that's pretty much it for that. Um, everything else, is, all my medium terms are staying at zero for now, unless I bring in some extra money. So I do have a lawsuit going on right now. Um, I don't anticipate it being much. It will basically just pay for the time off that I took. 
um, and medical bills, but any additional monies that I get from that that I'm able to put towards something will probably end up in these medium term goals or into my emergency fund section. And this is my five plus where you can see halfway through the year, I'm going to start trying to fund that again in June. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then last but not least, I have SMC summer music camp. Um, I'm hoping that in 2022 it will happen. I don't think it'll happen in 2021, which is why I'm not saving for it. But I anticipate a $205 because that's what I budgeted for 2020 and it got canceled or in 2021 and it's probably going to get canceled. So that's what that is. And then regional contest, I'm starting it um, again to save for that one, assuming that it will be canceled in 2021 and 2022 is when it will happen. Now, um, delegates is supposed to be 2022 and Galifest is supposed to be 2021. I put the money here and it should be in July, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's not going to happen in 2022. It's supposed to be 2021. I don't know. And they're trying to get it pushed out to 2022. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, it might just be, hey, we're going to skip this time and go to 2023. And if so, that'll give me even longer to save for it. But everything's kind of up in the air. If I find out information before the, or when I find out information in general, then I'll adjust it. But for now, that's what it is. Now, how I know if I'm close to what I should be for the, the budget is down here on this remainder to budget. You can see that I'm at less than $30 across the board. I'm not trying to budget to zero for these because this is a projected. I doubt that I'm going to make exactly $500, right? It's an estimate. So some months I might make a little more, some months I might make a little less. This is only projected if everything was beautiful, this is what my budget would look like. Some months will not look like this at all. And something might come up because I guarantee you my 2020 forecast did not anticipate COVID. So there's that. But I mean, it does help you. You can see kind of visualize what your year financially will look like. Figure out what kind of goals you can feasibly fit into there. So say that I really wanted to fit one of these medium term goals in as not a medium term goal and make it a one year goal rather than a two or three year goal. So say I really wanted to fit the landscaping in. Okay, well, I need to get $1,200 before the end of the year. If I look through, what can I cut to get $1,200 at the end of the year? That's $100 a month. It doesn't seem like a ton, but $100 a month is actually pretty hard to find. You're gonna have to take a few dollars off from here and a few dollars off from there. Um, I'd probably end up having to cut either M visits down by like maybe make it to 80. So I now I only have to find $80 and, um, cause I've saved $20 from there, but that would mean I'd have less frequent travel to see him. And I really think that 2021, hopefully fingers crossed will be a year where I'm able to go and see him more often than in 2020 because fun. Um, Travel and truck would probably not be able to be funded because that right there is five, six, seven hundred dollars. I could take and put that towards it. So now we're at eight hundred and twenty dollars out of twelve hundred that I need. You see how it it forces you to kind of say, is this a feasible goal for this year? In in my case, I could probably make it work but I would have to give up something. So I might not be able to put as much money into home as I want to, or I wouldn't be able to travel as often to see M as I, as I want to. Um, maybe I would need to lessen the amount that I put towards some of my holiday and um, gift giving opportunities, because I mean, that is a lot of money in a, in a year right there. Um, and, you know, without, without some of that spending, I might be able to make it happen. But if that's more important to me than getting the landscaping done in 2021, then 2021 is not the year for, for, for landscaping. Maybe it'll have to be 2022. So that's, that's kind of the power of doing a one year forecast. You can kind of look longer, you know, and if you want to look even further out, you can, you can do a, a two year or a three year or longer, 
But something to note about if you do longer than a year, which you totally can, is once you're past a one year, then there's a lot more life that can be happening, right? Um, especially if you have a family already or you're married or, or whatever, you could be having babies in that time period. You could be moving, taking new jobs. There's a lot of change. And you have to be willing to say, okay, something has changed. Let me come back and look at this forecast. This isn't a set it and forget it kind of thing. Um, I use it in order to create a template and to set my goals. But it's, it's so it's like an annual for me, um, unless something big changes. If something big changes, I head back in and update. This year, there was the year of big things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I didn't know what to change. I mean, you don't know if, if you're going to be driving more one month to the next month or all of the crazy. And I didn't anticipate electricity being as high as it was because I was working from home. Um, should have. Didn't. So when I when I looked at my budget in March, I was like, I think it'll probably stay the same. Why would it change? Heather, you're running two computers pretty much 24-7 out of your computer. Out of your computer. Out of your, out of your home. Plus your lights are on more often. Um, all of these things. So, yeah. Smart cookie here. Anyway, that is pretty much all I have to say about this. You will probably see a little bit different before January hits, depending upon um, these credit cards, like I said, because that is my number one goal. If I can put a little bit more, I don't make quite enough um, extra towards these goals in 2020, then I'll have to adjust so that I can pay them off in March, because that is my drop dead date for those, or at least for the Bank of America. So I will see you guys next time. Oh, I am going to be putting a um, empty template of this that will allow you to use my category groups and come all the way down to the bottom and also put in your projected um, additional income and base income to tell you how much you have left to budget. If you want to make any changes, you can literally, I've made it so that you can add you can insert categories like that, and then it'll still work. Um, you won't be able to change the total budgeted or the remainder to budget or the to projected total just because those are automatically going to change for you, um, but are automatically total for you. But you don't really want to probably mess with those. But anyway, it is a very simple format. There's nothing crazy with it. But I will see you guys next time. Bye.